Hey Corner Cuties, welcome and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Jamie and I'm here today to do another bread making video with my Frigidaire bread maker. So I did a couple videos using it. Actually, I think I did one video using it. One or two? One? I think it was just one. But I did a video making it. I got a bunch of questions and I haven't tried anything else in a while. So I wanted to come back and try a different bread. And today I am going to do a natural sourdough loaf. So I have all my ingredients here. I have everything I need. And I'm trying something different today because I have my regular Red Star yeast, but then I also have this instant sourdough yeast. I was in the grocery store, I think I was in Winco, and I was on the yeast aisle and I saw it and I'm like, okay, instant sourdough. It says yeast plus sourdough culture. So I'm gonna try it. It's supposed to give it that good little, you know, tang you get from a sourdough bread. And it says on the back here, a breakthrough for bread lovers, the flavor of an authentic sourdough culture with the convenience of yeast. No more finicky starters. So we're gonna try it and see. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna use this instead of the regular yeast and we'll see how it comes out. If it's not successful, then we'll just have to try again with the regular yeast and I'll let you guys know how that works out. So let's get started. I got my Frigidaire here. I got the loaf and mixing pan here. So I'm going to get back in here. Put him in and twist him. Oh wait, you know what, before I do that, I should put the mixing hook on. So let's put that on. There it is. So I got that in there. And so we'll go ahead and get this locked into place. If you put it on and then you twist it, yeah. And then it locks into place. And then we are gonna get our ingredients going. So first, based off of what the book said, you layer your ingredients in order based off of the way they are in the book. So there's the recipe. And we're gonna do the natural sourdough. So we'll start with our water. And I'm gonna do the two pound loaf. And the recommendations, everything that I saw when I was reading up about the yeast, cause I'm completely new to this whole bread making thing. So I'm still learning. So, you know, we're gonna do this together. Said that I needed warm water to, you know, get my yeast going. So for the two pound loaf of the natural sourdough, it says I need one cup of water. So what I'm going to do is measure that out. And then, I'm gonna just put it in the microwave real quick. I could have, you know, used my kettle, but honestly, I didn't think about it beforehand. So, this will be the quick fix. <clears throat> so actually, I'll get that out before it does the full time because I don't really want it to be hot, hot. I just want it to be warm. So we'll get the one cup of water in and then I need two big spoons of the sugar. And you know, the bread maker comes with a scooper, which is a big spoon and a small spoon, which is basically a teaspoon and a tablespoon. So I'll do two big spoons of sugar once I get that water down. And let's get him out, let's test it. Oh, no. we'll let him do his other 30 seconds because it's not really that warm yet. So we'll do the two big spoons of sugar and then four big spoons of milk powder. So when I made my quick loaf, I didn't have any milk powder, so I didn't use it. And actually it came out pretty good without it. And I think that day I just really wanted to make some bread that day and I didn't have it. And I read up on it and it said I didn't, like you could use it, but you didn't have to use it. So for this one, I got some. So we'll see how much of a difference it makes. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. All right, so it said, it says technically 240 milliliters 
which is roughly one cup and that's a little bit more but I didn't want to not have enough all right so let me get him flat and I can level and yeah all right so we got one cup of warm water so I'll pour that in at the bottom <clears throat> so then two big spoons of sugar that's one and two and then four big spoons of the milk powder And I'm going to be honest with y'all, I'm assuming milk powder is just instant milk. So that's what I purchased. That's one. Two. Three. And four. All right. Then we need two big spoons of butter that I have here. All right. It's one. Just trying to make sure it's full. And two. I hope I don't need this again. One small spoon of table salt. Okay. So I my table salt here. And the small spoon is basically a teaspoon. But I'll use their little scooper. And so what's left is my 400 grams, which is roughly two and a half cups of flour, and then the yeast. So what I'm going to do, though, is get a little spatula <clears throat> and just kind of swirl this all together. I don't know, because I just protein filled, like, you know, if I mix it a little everything will kind of be blended evenly before I dump that flour on top all right so just kind of give that a little swirl and so now we need two and a half cups of flour and I am using bread flour so <clears throat> And I have my canister, I have a big canister like this one here, and it has my all-purpose flour in it. I don't know why I've never bought another one to put the bread flour in, but I just started this bread, bread making thing. So, you know, if I'm going to be using it more often, I will definitely have to do that. <clears throat> All right, so that's another one. That's one cup. So we're doing two and a half cups. That's one cup. supposed to technically what pour not scoop but forgive me. that's two cups <clears throat> and go pop out I like these I thought these were so cute when I saw them they pop pop in and out so they can store flat All right, so that's two and a half cups of flour. Put that down. All right. 
and then I need my yeast. So, okay, I'm going to tell the truth. I was kind of confused about the whole yeast and how much yeast to use and the measurements. So, I had read, the book says a third of a small spoon, basically, no matter if you're making a one, one and a half or two pound loaf. But when I read the instructions on the yeast jar, it said something different about a half a teaspoon per cup of flour. So that's what I'm gonna go off of and we're gonna hope that this comes out right. But we shall see. So this the um this platinum superior baking yeast is made by Red Star. So it's just supposed to be a sourdough starter that they made to give you that um, nice little funky sourdough taste. <clears throat> I hate these crispy shoes. Okay. For whatever reason, they're only sharp right at the, the cutting part is only right here at the tip. I don't know. Strange, very strange, but whatever. So I decided, based off of the half teaspoon for every cup of flour you're using, that I'm gonna do one and a half teaspoons of yeast is what I'm gonna try today. So I got my one and my quarter and in the bread machine, they say to make sure when you put your yeast in, you know, you layer everything the way they say because they want the yeast right on top in the flour, not touching the liquid yet until you're actually ready to start mixing. So the flour is all stacked up, and so I'm just going to put this one and one quarter spoonfuls of yeast right on top into the flour so it's not touching any water until I'm ready for it to actually start mixing. So there we go, one and a quarter teaspoons of the yeast. I have some left over, so I think they say you can refrigerate or freeze it. I might sell it, get the little cellar thing and sell it off and put it in the refrigerator or freezer and make another loaf. Hopefully this one will be successful, but you know, if not, we'll work at it again. All right, so that is all of the ingredients. Everything is in. I'll let you guys see what it looks like in the um, in the bread maker. Okay, guys, so that's everything in the loaf pan for the, for the bread. You see how the yeast is sitting right on top of the flour, so nothing's touching the it's not touching the moisture yet, rather. So now that's it, that's in. It's locked into place. We're gonna go ahead and give this a close. And now, let's see. It tells you here based off of the type of bread you're making, what setting you want to be on. And number three is for a natural sourdough. So let me give this a little twist so I can see it. So on the menu, okay, so we're menu number three. So there we go. Menu three is for natural sourdough. And we want medium color. And I think that's it, right? Do I hit low? Oh, okay, the size of the low. So that's the one one pound the one and a half pound and the two pound and we're doing the two pound loaf so that's the loaf for the color i want to do medium or should i do oh hold on i'm pushing the wrong button okay for uh color i think that's over here there we go um we'll do dark we'll do dark in color because the last one i did medium it was kind of light and so that's basically it. So we're doing menu number three, which is for natural sourdough. We're doing the two pound loaf. We want it dark in color. And we're gonna hit start. Now the crazy thing is, look, that says 649. That has to be six hours and 49 minutes. So this is about to be a process. And I kind of started this late in the day. So I guess I need to go and get comfortable because my bread gonna be baking for a while. So, yeah, this, it's going to be a late night, guys, working on this loaf of bread. But that just means I'll have me some good fresh bread for the morning. So, not sure if, um, I'm not sure if, I would think I could just leave it if by chance I did go ahead and go to bed, that I could just leave it and have me a nice fresh loaf of bread in the morning. But because... It's four now, so that's roughly going to be 11-ish. I'll probably be up anyway. So I'll probably go ahead and just wrap up the video, let you guys see what the finished product is. 
and how it came out. But I'll check back in kind of midway through and let you see where it's at as far as what the dough looks like before it actually starts. Again. So, all right, guys, stick around. I think I'm going to go make me a cocktail since it looks like I'm going to be up for a while. Be back. All right, guys, so I'm back just for a quick check in. It's been about two and a half hours going on three hours. So the bread machine has mixed and rested and mixed again. And I think this is the second time that it's resting now. You see, it still says it has another four hours to go. And it's the ferment like is blinking, I believe that is. Yes, so it's already gone through the mixing and the resting and all that. So it's in ferment mode. If you look down in there, you can see the dose formed. So I guess at this point, we're just resting and rising and resting and rising. So four hours. I think that last hour is going to be all bake time. So it probably has three more hours or so of resting. So I will be back. I guess when it's done, because at this point it's resting, it's really not much to see. So I'll be back at the end to let you see what the finished product is. So stick around. All right, guys, so I am back. If you can see the time behind me, it is 11.22. So again, started this project a little bit too late in the day, but that's all right. I know now next time I'll start earlier, but the bread is ready. So let's go ahead and get it out. I was kind of excited. So I was like, I don't want to wait till morning. I'll go ahead and wrap this up tonight. So remember, I don't know how hot this is, remember that when we set the color for the bread, we did dark. So we got us a nice dark crusty loaf. Let's see if you guys can see that. So there you go. It is dark in color. So now... Let's see. Oh, it is hot. There we go. It's out. All right. There it is there. Just put that there. Let's see. Did the clip come out the bottom? Oh, actually, you look in there. The mixing hook stayed inside. So I don't have to worry about getting that out the bottom of the loaf. Look. It came out pretty good. Feels all nice and crusty. But there we go. That's our two pound loaf. All right. We did dark in color. So he's nice and crusty. He got good height on him. So as far as the rising goes, I guess I used enough yeast. So let's go ahead and slice into him and see what he tastes like. It's still really warm because it um just got done. I think what was it? It was on warm mode when I got back down here on 50 something minutes. And I think it'll do a warm mode for about an hour. So like it just got done. Look at that guys. Oh. So I'm definitely thinking by far. See that smoke and that steam. It's like super, 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 super fresh. But look, he looks kind of nice and fluffy. Oh my God, it's all nice and soft. You know what? All right. Let's taste it. <clears throat> I should have made and had to come down here with me and taste it. But what I'll do is I'll get her to taste it and see what she thinks and we'll put it up on like Instagram or something. All right, I'm going to just pull... Oh my God. 
guys it's good and it's all nice and airy and light oh okay i really like it by far of all the bread i've made this is the best loaf it's nice it's airy it's soft like if i had i'm just talking with my mouth full if i had a way to slice it on nice and thin slices for sandwiches it would be so perfect for that i don't know if i can get it to do that with my regular bread knife but I'm going to try it. I have some melted butter or some softened butter over here. I had softened this earlier. Because I was going to do. Um, actually I used a little bit of it when I made this bread. But originally I had softened so much. Because I was going to do some banana bread. And it needed a whole stick of butter. So I softened the whole stick. And I left it out. So it's perfect for spreading look at that it's really good like i'm like i feel so proud in this moment it's really good it's perfect for if i wanted bread on the side with dinner or if i could get it sliced thin enough to use it on a sandwich Ooh. In the morning when I make my avocado so okay I'm just all excited what I will say using that um that sourdough yeast I'm not getting super super sourdough taste you know how sour sourdough that sour kind of tangy funky it's not overpowering like I haven't made a loaf without that to compare like what it would taste that taste like compared to just using regular yeast this still kind of tastes kind of regular. I'm not really getting a whole bunch of the, the tangy sour coming through. But oh my God, I'm, I feel so accomplished in this moment, guys. This by far, this is the best loaf I've made. And like, it's really good, soft, airy bread consistency look at that like i'm so excited i'm so proud in this moment i can't wait for everybody else in the house to taste it so i won't harass anybody because it is almost midnight but tomorrow i'm definitely gonna make sure everybody tastes this and i'll definitely make sure that renetta leaves you guys a post on instagram and let you know what she thinks about it but guys it was a success i think it was like a big 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 success so there it is the sourdough bread and my frigidaire bread maker i will definitely make it again uh, the only thing that i could say could be different is i could work on that sour taste of sourdough bread but as far as just a good loaf of bread goes this is definitely it so thank you guys for sticking around to the end and watching the whole video try it let me know if you like it let me know how it comes out for you it just I'm so proud. Like I'm like, I'm like, it looks like good bread. It's not all dense and thick and it rolls really, really good. So definitely you guys try it. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for coming around the corner. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe and to hit that notification bell so you know when we drop new videos. See you guys next time. Bye.